You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here. It's time for another Ask Cam Kevin question. I am inside the most echoey place in my house. It's my former office, which is still kind of my office. But as you can see, I have been slacking. I have not done much work. But what I will do and what I have done is set up the incubators, you see. And the incubators are cooking some eggs. And today's Ask Camp Kevin question comes from Chris Dornish. And he asked, can you make a video showing the different stages of egg incubation? Also, daily maintenance and how to prevent bugs and eggs from cracking due to moisture. Great question. Let's see if I can answer it, everybody. We're going in. We're checking out the incubator. Now, first things first, the incubator I use are from Sea Serpents. It's their uh, good old hot box incubator. And uh, you can check them out right there. Uh, good old Chris is a friend of mine, and he has set me up with a beautiful incubator. And uh, these work very well. Now, first things first, I've got my Vivarium Electronics uh, thermostat and uh, control module right there, keeping everything at about 84 degrees. You can program this for nighttime drops, but I just keep it at 84 degrees. Now, uh, again, I have a humidity gauge in here. Uh, there it is. It doesn't really, this thing, I don't know, I got it from Home Depot, not really too stoked on them. They don't work that well. But what I do is basically do it by feel. I put a tray of water in here. Okay, I always make sure that's full. And then I am, I've been using Perlite and Vermiculite as well as some of these uh, sim containers where you can put water on the bottom right here. Down there, you'll put a little bit of water and it keeps the nice humidity here. Now, I've released the top or sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the top on these but leave them cracked because sometimes you can gather too much moisture. I also do burn little pinholes inside of these because let's have a look so you can see. So you can vent it better. There's a little eggshell there. Uh, but anyway, you can vent it a little bit better. Uh, so there it is. Uh, all right, so you get a little flow. Uh, in other cases, when I need more humidity for a species like these Chinese boxster legs, I use the perlite. I do a one-to-one -one ratio of water to perlite for weight. And then I put some sphagnum moss that's been uh, moistened on top. And these guys are doing very well. Um, what I like to do every few days is I crack open some of these to give them air. As you know, this one is already cracked open. Uh, so I like to do some gas exchange. Again, all of my containers will have some holes in there for breathability. But when you do that, you're going to have to make sure that the humidity in there uh, is still adequate. And sometimes I'll take uh, a large syringe or turkey baster, and I'll just put a little bit of water into the substrate, directly into the substrate. You just inject it, and uh, that'll give you some moisture, and you don't want to really wet the eggs, okay? That's not what you want to do. These are some radiated tortoise eggs cooking. Um, so now let's get on to some exciting news. Let's see if I have some eggs that are actually uh, hatching. Ah, look at this, and I think we actually have eggs that are going through certain levels of hatching. So let's, let's start, of course, with this phase. Uh, this is what a little bit more than pipping. This is a cherry head tortoise, okay? And this little tortoise right here uh, has pipped out this morning. He was a lot more um, concealed, but I went ahead and I broke open a little portion so that he can breathe easier because sometimes uh, I've had tortoises uh, die because they get suffocated. They get some mucus on them. If the humidity isn't right in the incubator or if it's too dry, that mucus will harden over their nares or nostrils and that could be uh, disastrous because they asphyxiate, they, they suffocate and uh, unfortunately they'll die as they try and get out of the egg. So what I do is I just take a pair of tweezers and peel back the thin membrane, the, the, there's like two parts to the shell. There's a hard outer layer, and then if you look right here, right there is a softer leathery type layer of the shell, and I just peel that back with my little forceps, and I give him a little breathing area, and then what he does is he kind of moves around, uses his egg tooth to continue to break out of the shell, and basically he'll spin around as much as he can to kind of break through that shell. Uh, and then after that, you can kind of see on this cherry head right here, this cherry head is completely split through the shell. I'm gonna go ahead and gently move it off like this. 
Oh, there you go, little buddy. These are beautiful cherry heads. These are Darth Maul cherry heads, everybody. So these are the really beautiful and unique uh, cherry heads. Look at this, I'm just gonna gently move them. There's his yolk sack, and there he is. Oh, let me see if I can get past that. Yes, look at the color. Look at these Darth Maul babies. They are just spectacular. Oh gosh, I love these babies. They are the most colorful cherry heads that I hatch out. So you can see the yolk sack beneath him. I'm gonna put him back down because he's a little slippy. I like to kind of help them out a little bit. Now you don't need to do much more than what I'm doing. I just pulled this off. Oh, look at this, here's another one. He's in another stage. They're pretty, these guys are basically hatched, okay? Their shells have been split open. Um, what happens is as they hatch, I'm gonna move this stuff over there. Their shells continue to unfold. Here's one that hatched uh, the other day. This is from the same clutch. And you'll also notice there's a uh, there's another leopard tortoise that hatched out. Isn't that beautiful? So there's a little baby leopard tortoise that came out. There's his yolk sac. You'll see on the leopard tortoise, there's a seam. There seems to be a fold right just above the yolk sac here on the plastron. Uh, and what happens is the baby tortoise is actually folded in half. So the, the baby tortoise is folded in half, and as he grows and breaks out, he's able to unfold himself, and that's what happens. His shell starts to harden, blood flow goes into that area, and it starts to push it open, and he unfolds, and that's when he's able to break out completely. But you can kind of see just how beautiful these cherry heads are. These are all Darth Maul cherry heads. They are just spectacular. So what I do is I leave them in here. You can see the different stage here of the yolk being absorbed. Uh, this guy right now, like I said, came out of the egg yesterday. So this absorbs pretty quickly, but I'll probably keep this tortoise inside here for another week. And what I'll then do is I pull them out. See, look, this is just a little bit behind. Okay, see how a little bit behind he is? Uh, but what I'll then do is I'll soak them in water, but you gotta be careful if their yolk isn't absorbed because it, they get kind of wobbly. If you, let, if you put them on their bellies, they either tip their noses down or their, backs, uh, their butts back. Um, they're never like able to sit in the water perfect, so you don't want them to drown. Guys, I am astonished by how beautiful this cherry head is. This is a Darth Maul cherry head, as are all of these. These are just incredible. Look at the color on this cherry head. Look at the legs. This is a crazy legs Darth Maul cherry head tortoise. Uh, I'm actually, I'm so, this guy wasn't out earlier, so when I got that question today, I thought, my goodness, what, what stroke of luck we're able to do this. Um, but guys, you can now see just, let me see if I can focus in on this guy again. There we go. You can see the difference. You can see uh, through this video the different stages of hatching. So. It's really just a remarkable situation. Uh, we do this incubation, um, we pull the animals out of the ground here in Florida because you know we get very wet and we wanna control the incubation. We wanna make sure that we cut down any variables that may harm the eggs and embryos developing inside of them. There could be flooding, there could be predators, there could be fungus, there could be many, many things that actually cause the eggs to die when they're being naturally incubated. Um, now, the part of the question also was how do you cut down on bugs? Well, it's about uh, keeping up with rotten eggs or eggs that are not fertile that start to rot and um, draw flies in. Now, another thing I do is I get these no pest strips and I just leave them here on the racks and that helps out with cutting down on the flies. But you have to be proactive, guys. It's very important to be proactive with these animals. I'm gonna cover these up again. Say goodbye to the most beautiful little cherry heads you've ever seen and that gorgeous little, yeah, what's he called? Yeah, he's a leopard. Anyway, we're gonna close them up. And I noticed something while I was looking, guys. Um, we got a stinky egg here, and these drive Kate crazy because if you've never smelt a rotten tortoise egg, good for you. Because look, this is what you got to do. I check the incubator every couple of days, uh, and we have a broken egg. Uh, this was not at all. Uh, it smells so bad, I'm going to vomit. Oh, God. I'm thick. Hold on, let me just put it in this cup. Oh, God. Uh, I'm really feeling gross. But what I like to do is I'll just pull out this stuff because it can attract flies and you don't want to do that. And while you're doing it, you just have to be careful. You don't want to rotate the eggs off their center, but I am able to kind of feel the eggs uh, to see if there's an embryo in it or if they feel heavy. I like to kind of organize. I'm a little OCD in that way. 
uh, just try and get them all organized. Uh, this material feels a little dry, so uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put some, uh, just like a little bit of water in this side, okay, and that'll moisten it. So let's go do that right now. Now it's okay actually for this incubator to be open, but I'm going to go ahead and shut it really quick. I'm just going to not fully latch it, I'm just going to put the clip on and hold on to it. Let's go ahead and get some water. And you're going to use lukewarm water, okay? You don't want to use cold water or hot water. You want to just use some water that, um, you know, will enable, will just be kind of good for the uh, tortoise, it won't spike the temperature at all for the embryos. Um, pardon me, I'm, I'm one man band here right now. So we're going to walk over here to the garbage, that's French. Yeah, uh, this smells delightful. Okay, cool. Uh, we did that. We tossed that. Now we're gonna go back, and I'm gonna go get uh, a little bit, uh, just a little cup of water, and we'll add some water uh, to the substrate in the incubator. All right. So uh, you can do this. Some people like to use distilled water. Okay. You know, I'm not gonna show you the dishes. I didn't do the dishes today. You don't want to know what will happen to me. If Kate comes home. You realize. I didn't do the dishes. We're gonna get this video done and then I'm gonna do dishes because you know, happy wife, happy life. No smelly eggs, makes her even happier. Okay, so back to the task at hand. We're gonna take this water and uh, I just put it in. That's it, all right? You don't have to go crazy. Just give it a little bit of a drink and this will be then sealed like that. I've made a mess on the floor, but you guys don't mind, do you? Keeping it real here, Camp Kennedy. You'll also notice I have some ants. <laughs> that I've got to spray for. Uh, one of the benefits of living here in South Florida, you always have little buddies coming to hang out inside of your home. Uh, but now we're back, let's just peek in there. Nothing going on, nothing going on. But I added some water the other day. That feels nice and moist. And again, with the water in here, it's evaporating and once it's sealed up, it really does a good job of keeping the entire incubator nice and moist. Uh, I also sometimes like to just keep the lids a little bit cracked so that they're not airtight and they can actually benefit from the moisture that's uh, evaporating up throughout the entire incubator. Uh, we also have this fan back here and that is sucking air in and putting it down, through, going through the false wall in the back, which is being heated up and then it's being forced out here. It heats up the water and it's a nice cycle. So it keeps things uh, moving. Keep it moving, moving. Let's look at one more time this beautiful little cherry head and then we'll sign off everybody because I think we've done a good thing. I think we broke through with a really cool video for everybody. All right, so there you go. Mr. Dornlish, thank you very much for your question. I hope this helps. Uh, you know, it's about keeping the incubator clean, keeping up with rotten eggs. Uh, if you do get those little pests, get the no pest strips. Uh, very effective, remove the egg immediately and try and discard any dirty substrate as fast as you can. Uh, you don't want to get a fly strike on the yolk. That could be very, very uh, bad for the baby tortoises. So uh, again, they're going to stay in here for up to a week. They're going to absorb and uh, be on the lookout on Instagram for this little guy because my goodness, is that a beautiful tortoise. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for your questions. Uh, keep them questions coming. You can go to patreon.com slash camp cannon if you want to get your question answered. Answer. Ask your question, I'll answer it. And if you guys enjoy the videos and you like the Ask Camp Kevins, uh, please do me a favor, go to that Patreon account and help support the channel. We are trying to do the right thing by providing people with education about these beautiful animals. Say goodbye, I'm signing off. It's time now to get on out to the backyard. You get outside too. Remember, conservation and education equals infinity. I'll see you guys later. It's an easier on us, but... Oh, put it, put it down, put it down. Oh, there she is. That's a big old snake.